everybody and welcome back to the Bill Tendo Show. I am your host, Bill Tendo, along with my buddy, Mike Got It Made Fink, where we're going to be talking about various video game things. Uh, you interested in video games? Check out my website, BillTendo.com, and I can hook you up. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. I'm like, Bill Tendo is everywhere. It's exhausting. <laughs> Mike. What's up, Billy? Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this is the only Bill Tendo thing where he can't sell you anything while you listen to him. This is the <laughs> Bill Tendo show. <laughs> Every week we talk about a variety of things like Polly Pockets and carpet samples and 80s cat breeds and, and everything else that interests us from the 90s and 2000s. Because that's what we do. Billy. Hey, so uh, today we're going to be talking about, and Mike and I are in an insane number of uh, Facebook groups between the two of us. I don't even know how many, all dealing with different aspects of gaming and several other interests. So um, Mike put out a bunch of polls this week, and uh, we're going to be going over what people's favorite systems of all time are. So that's going to be our main subject today. But before we do that, we're going to get into the news of the week, but before we do that, I wanted to tell Mike about something awesome that happened to me, and uh, so, you know, I have my, my helper that comes a couple days a week. He helps me out with shipping. He's a really big help in doing all these mods that I do. Um, he's worked with me hand-in-hand -hand development. He's 23 years old. He's one of my son's friends. He's a, he's a great kid. Um he shows up and he's like, hey, Bill, I found this in my uncle's basement. And my uncle said he forgot it was down there. And it's a 19, I think it was 83 Omnibot. And, uh, you know, it was the little robot with the clear dome head. And it had a serving tray in the commercials. It was riding around the house serving you Coca-Cola cans and tape player for a chest you could put a Aussie tape in there like I used to do my Teddy Ruxpin had Black Sabbath in it but being an 80s kid that was awesome and this thing is complete in the box uh box is a little worse for wear but I have not even thought about the Omnibot in 20 years and I was super hyped to see one so yeah that's in my dining room right now so Omnibot's going to be the special guest Next week, I assume, on the show? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Pre-recorded cassettes. Yeah. It's like chat GBT, but, you know, 30 years ago, and we decide the answers. Yo, Mike, 1980 was like 40 years ago, bro. It, it's however many years ago I want it to be, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Being fair, my daughter is 26, and she was born in 96, and I still think the 90s was like five, ten years ago. So. Oh yeah, my when I worked back in retail, a lot, in, in a long time now, but it used to drive me crazy when anybody born after two by cigarettes or anything like get out of here and then i look yeah. and go, oh, oh fine yeah. <laughs> i guess <laughs> yeah you know it's weird the things that make you feel old i have uh i think the first time i ever felt old is i have two younger brothers and um one of them's only two years younger than me but then i have one that's eight years and eight days younger than me and i remember at his high school graduation I already had three kids, man, and I was married, and I was like, uh, that was the first time in my life that I ever felt like, man, I think I might be getting older. Yeah, my oldest is graduating this year. She's already graduated, essentially. We're just waiting for the for the ceremony. But, yeah, I'm not a terribly old parent, or at least I don't feel like I am, but then you have other people my age who have just had their first child, and they're like, oh, all right, fine. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, that that's insanity to me, right? So uh, I've been in another time lapse thing is I've been in New York. I've been living here for about eight years. My wife had to remind me of that the other day because I was like, when was the last time I was home? Like two or 
three years ago. And she's like, Billy, you haven't been back to Louisiana in over five years. It's about to hit six years. I'm like, how long have I been living here? And she's like, eight years. And I'm like, holy moly. I would have guessed four or five, you know? <laughs> that it was it was crazy to me. Like I, I but when I first moved up here, we were both already um, you know, just about to hit 40 years old. And we both have children from previous marriages. And uh at first she was kind of a little bit, you know, like, hey, would you want to have another kid? And I was like, absolutely not, not gonna happen. I'm <laughs> I'm 40 years old, it ain't gonna happen. And she's like, are you sure? Are you sure? And I'm like, oh, I'm certain. I'm certain. I think that's a terrible idea. And like yesterday, she was like, remember when I asked you about that when we were just about 40 and you were like, absolutely not. And I said, yeah. And she goes, that was a good call. <laughs> <laughs> man, I shout could, out. <laughs> oh, man, I, 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 I couldn't, you know, I, I have so much respect for uh, parents, but I, Dude, I'm past that point in my life where I could have a baby. You know, I I don't know if I would have that in me. It, no, I I definitely effort. don't. My youngest is five, and I can't even think about going backwards. Like, please God, he sleeps through the night. Why would I trade this for anything? Like, right? <laughs> okay, so Mike, I know this is 100% off rails, um, but I'm gonna tell you my absolute favorite moment of being a parent. And anybody that gives you any other moment is a liar. And I'm I'm a stand on that hill. When your child is young and they're getting from that stage of they cry about everything to learning how to talk, the best moment is when that kid tells you why they're crying. When you yeah. realize they can tell you why they are crying. Dude, that's like the greatest parenting moment to exist because they still super tiny and they still so cute, and, you know, and they they haven't started all the teenage drama yet and all that. So it's just precious moments. And then they're like, well, my foot hurts. And you're like, oh, I can do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But tell me what, like when they're sick. Like, you're, yeah. I'm sick. Yeah. What do you mean you're sick? And then they tell you, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. got cough drops. We're good. Yeah, we, we we have something for that. I can fix that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an adult. Watch this. <laughs> yep, that's what it takes, man. For me, that was it. That's top of the mountain, man. Tell me why you're crying so we can fix it. Love it. All right. So that's the Mike and Billy news. Let's get to the actual news now. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I got for you this week, Billy, is that the new Godzilla vs. King Kong movie has been uh, revealed. They finally titled it Godzilla vs. Kong, the new empire. So that's the fourth one, if you've been keeping track in the new Godzilla series, the Godzilla and then Kong Skull Island in what was like 2018. And then... uh. King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong, which was two years ago now, I think. So, mm -hmm. four. Four Godzilla movies. Um, why, why, why would you say that's bad? I love Godzilla. King Kong, I could take or leave for the most part. Um, I remember when I was a kid, that's some of my first memories of uh, watching movies and television was... If I stayed home from school sick, I watched Star Trek The Next Generation. And on the weekends, uh, the one of the UHF channels in Louisiana, I believe it was uh, uh, WGNO, like 26 or something, they played Godzilla and King Kong movies on like Sunday mornings after the cartoons. That was my favorite, man. Like Sunday morning cartoons were garbage. All the good cartoons were on Saturday and so people would get upset, oh, the cartoon's over, but not me, because I'm going to get to see Godzilla versus Mothra, you know? I was always yeah. a big Godzilla fan. So. I do like the the really kitschy B-film style old Godzilla oh, yeah. movies. The new, the new ones have been cool, but there's so many cool... The thing about older Godzilla was it was its own thing, and 
like the special effects were so cool for the time and now it's so buried in like all the other sci-fi special effect monsters yes. you know movies, you know. like cloverfield was a great huge monster movie and three-part series eventually yes and so we just keep you know uh pacific ring you know there's so many or pacific rim i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> so many we have so many like good like monster movies now that we're not relying on just one and they're all and the special effects are great at all of them. so i feel like godzilla and king kong just kind of gets lost in this kind of time you know i i i could definitely see your point on that um so there's all these great monster movies cloverfield could have been adapted uh well the original cloverfield could have definitely been adapted to be a king uh, uh godzilla movie and that would have been really cool and I enjoyed Cloverfield. I enjoyed the second one where they were in space, or was that the third one? And then that's the third one. Okay. Paradox is the third yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And the then Cloverfield Lane is different. the second. And yeah. I actually enjoyed all of the Cloverfield movies. And I mean, like everybody I know that I've talked about the Cloverfield movies with enjoyed them, but they weren't successful. The first one was relatively successful, but they were not critically successful and they didn't make tons of money, but I don't think I've ever met anybody that said, Oh, that's just bad writing. They're not very good because they're extremely interesting. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it was a fun I, take. I, I thought so too. I thought it was, um, you know, if I had to categorize it, like it definitely started out like a new modern Godzilla. And then they started twisting all of this metaphysical and, uh, and theoretical stuff into it. Like a, a big thing with the second one, Cloverfield Lane, for me was, is any of this actually real? And that's what the whole movie was, was it messed with your head, just like it was messing with this girl's head. Is any of this actually real or is this all bullshit, you know? And then the third one, then you're getting into theoretical astrophysics and everything. So every, all, all of the movies had a little something, but you know, I, I enjoyed them and I know I got off track cause we were talking about Godzilla, but yes, I love Godzilla. I got no beef with a new Godzilla movie. I'm going to watch it. Uh, if he could fight uh Mecha Godzilla, I'll watch that. If he could fight Mothra, I'll watch that. I can't remember who the worm monster was, but I'll watch that one too. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that remaking the old ones would be terrible either, but it would be more like a, uh, oh, like the Quentin Tarantino double feature thing. I'd rather go to the theater and sit for four hours and see like three of them. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I think there's something to be said for an underproduced Godzilla movie. Instead of this Michael Bay style Godzilla movie where, you know, it's 90 pounds of special effects and 10 pounds of story. Like, give me 50 pounds of story and 50 pounds of special effects and no special effects be made out of rubber and plaster. You know, Pract good Godzilla is best served in old school practical effects. You know, give me the guy in the foam suit crushing a cardboard city. I love it. That's uh, I have a special place in my heart for Caillou Big Battle. I don't know if you've ever watched that, but it's a bunch of uh, people dressed up in, you know, Caillou Big Monster costumes but they're in a wrestling uh -huh. arena and they wrestle with like special like really what? crappy special effects yeah <laughs> and uh oh, I would, so i would you know, definitely you, watch that <laughs> oh it's 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 so stupid but i've i like even own dvds because i like it so much it's so dumb <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds right up my alley because i love i'm i'm actually a big fan of bad special effects well, one of my favorite movies is Logan's Run, came out the same year as Star Wars. The special effects are some of the most atrocious ever made. Love the movie. Um, I, I, I just love bad special effects. And I love pro wrestling, uh, mostly 80s rock and wrestling and uh, Attitude Era, you know? Oh, all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, I'm trying to. This is me avoiding talking about wrestling for another 15 minutes because we have a whole show ahead of us. And yeah, that's true. Dude, man. I'm doing we, my best. I'm doing my best. Yeah, to cons- yeah no, that's fine. Let's stay out of wrestling for now because <laughs> if you and I get into talking about wrestling, we will never ever make it to the regular subject. Yeah, that's. A, I'll write a note. Wrestling is an entire show because Billy's wrong about it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, ah, the the next thing we got is there's a two parter. One, uh, Fast and the Furious or Fast Eleven is coming out, and coinciding with that, um, Best Buy is getting exclusive arcade one up versions of the two Fast and the Furious arcade cabinets, the stand up driving ones, and those are going to be uh, local. Comp- uh, multiplayer compatible. So you can plug four of them into each other, standing up next to each other, not over the internet. You have to physically plug them into each other and then you can play four-player Fast and Furious on your one-up arcade cabinets. Um, cool. I don't care. <laughs> Perfect. Dude, look, I, I have opinions about Fast and Furious. I loved the first movie. I thought the second one was interesting. I thought the li- third one was a little bit out of pocket. Um, there was no reason for a fourth movie to exist. Please tell me how we ended up with 11. Please. And make it make sense. Because in the first one, they were stealing VCRs and street racing. And now they're in outer space. They driving down the Hoover Dam. Like, this is crazy, man. They doing bank heist, dragging a vault through Buenos Aires. Or was it Rio? Anyway, none of this makes sense. It's all trash. They're toppling world governments. Dude, in the first movie, they stole VCRs. Well, that's like, because Panasonic stopped making VCRs last year, Billy. They The last production VCRs sold. So now what are they? They can't make fast movies without stealing VCRs if we don't have VCRs to steal. So, so they got to go into outer space? That's how you know yeah. a franchise is dead. Outer space means the franchise is dead. Uh, Leprechaun in space, uh, Friday the 13th in space, Hellraiser in space. Dude, if you take your franchise to outer space, it's because your franchise is dead and it's garbage now. Well, that's the only place that they're going to find more VCRs to steal, Billy, is probably <laughs> on the International Space Station. So, <laughs> Yeah, right. That That's the only ones left now. <laughs> No, nah, I, uh, I, I quit watching those <laughs> movies, man. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> the only other piece <laughs> of news I have is, um, and this one happened within the last 12 hours, is that a uh, United States serviceman, uh, Jack Teixeira, was caught uh, releasing international uh from the Air Force and various United States military in his Discord group where he plays military simulation games. Uh, specifically, what's the name? Uh, War Thunder, which is a free-to-play like vehicle combat thing. So, uh, uh, so now the Pentagon is considering looking into monitoring discords for, <laughs> for uh, all sorts of things because... Uh, this would cause an international incident if it was on any larger scale than whatever information he had released. So. Right. So uh, I, I talked about this the other day with my wife when it first popped up. Um, my wife, uh, we both donate money to NPR here in New York. My wife drives about two and a half hours a day going to and from work. And she either listens to audiobooks or NPR. I listen to it a bit myself um, because I prefer news radio. Uh, there are no radio stations that I feel are actually centrist. Um, so I tend to listen to NPR a little bit more, even though they lean in a certain direction. Uh, the direction doesn't matter to me. I would like to find something centrist. But it, at the end of the day, it's news, right? And they talk about things that are going on. So this is how I learned about it. This is how my wife learned about it. And uh, at the end of this whole story, I have a major question, Mike. So this guy 
who was uh, Air National Guard? Yes, that's what I understood. Okay, Air National Guard got a hold of he 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 got a hold of or saw or found classified documents at work, took pictures of them, released them into his Discord group, which had thousands of members, and uh, as as rightfully he should be, he was arrested. He is being charged with distribution of classified materials. Um, and whatever goes along with that, my question is, why is a National Guardsman with no security clearance able to see these in the first place? Who left these? Who left it, them from what, out? From what I understand it, it, that it wasn't something super serious. It was because he was a, a active pilot. He was sharing like pictures of. Uh, like the manuals, because of the game is like a, uh, you know, a flight simulator in essence, okay. parts of it. And he was sharing uh, like user manuals for American fighter jets and stuff like that. So I don't know like how in depth it was because it's it also pertained to the war in Ukraine and stuff like that. But I don't know if it was just it was linked to that because it's jets that are flying over there right now. I don't know uh -huh. how top secret the stuff was that he was sharing, you know, because anybody who buys a jet could get a user manual, I imagine. That I would think so. Um, so, so what you're saying are state secrets are hidden behind a paywall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but in in all seriousness, you understand my question, right? Like, no, I do. Like this guy, how, how did this guy even have access to this stuff? If he found it on a desk, if he found it in a cabinet, why? Why would he have access to even look at it in the first place if he's not cleared to do so? That means whoever was cleared to possess this information did not store it properly, and they should also be charged. I don't disagree with you. But then, do you, you know, were the people in his Discord group like, soliciting the information like hey please show us the stuff like how, oh, how many people I, how many people do you I then run down they the ratted road? him out <laughs> oh. <laughs> like they did from what i understand they wasn't playing along like hey this is cool man we we see in classified documents they're like hey this dude got classified documents <laughs> over here <laughs> That's fun too. I, I would like, I like, I like, no, I like the scenario where he was, where he's like the low man on the totem pole in a video game. And he's like, I got to impress my friends. I'm going right. to, I'm going to get some American secrets. I'm, I'm not doing so good in, uh, in this conflict of nations. You guys want to see some launch codes? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, God, God bless America, Billy, and yeah, how we just, continue. It, it doesn't really seem like everybody else in the world does this. It always seems like we're the first ones to find the best ways to make mistakes. Yeah, well, I mean, American innovation. What can I tell yeah. you, Mike? <laughs> America first. Yeah, we 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 are innovators, man. You want to, you want to see us innovate some disaster? We got it. We <laughs> yep. got it. You want to see us have a, a dude that's supposed to be washing cars release classified documents on Discord? We got it. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love where I live and the people I associate with. Right? Ooh. All right. So, things we love. There's the transition. I found it. Ah. <laughs> so, it was and, seamless. And, I got to give you credit. Yeah, seamless. Yeah. <laughs> Until you pointed out that it's not so great. <laughs> anyway, so as Billy alluded to earlier, we're uh, we just pulled Facebook essentially. I I try to just do one form of social media at a time when we do things like this because it's easier to keep track of and tabulate. And so we just did Facebook this time, and we asked a simple question, which was, "What are your top five systems of all time?" We didn't stipulate libraries or controllers or what you like to collect for just what are your top five systems i don't care why tell you know show them to me and then if you want to elaborate on one of them that seems out of place or do you think somebody else doesn't enjoy and you do then you're allowed to do that and we uh so we did that for a couple of days and got quite a few 
quite a few responses. And uh, I think a lot yeah. overall. I think there yeah. were a lot of answers. Yeah. I like I told Billy pre-show. I think we got at least one for every system that I've heard of, all the way down to people saying that they like ColecoVision and you know the Philips Seven Thousand. I remember what else. I mean, Amiga doesn't isn't surprising. PC game engine's not surprising. People like that, but like even somebody likes the Thirty Two X. Somebody who likes <laughs> Virtual Some Boy, the Spectrum. <laughs> somebody listed the original Pong, the home Pong. Wait, did system. you say? Did you say uh, ZX Spectrum? Yeah. Oh, they're definitely a Brit. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get it. No, uh, no uh, Vertex, Vectrex, or whatever that. No that, Vectrex. Nope. No. Wow. That's the only one I I was trying to rack my brain on what things. Dude, look, I don't. <laughs> Can we can we dive into Vectrex for like two seconds? We'll just glaze over it. I think it's an overrated system. I think it's cool for the time, but it's definitely a one-trick pony. It's got one game that you could play 26 different ways. It's pretty much just... It, a, it a, reminds me too much of the like handheld systems. The, the noise that that machine makes burns yeah. a hole into the side of my head that I cannot repair. You, you talking about like the the tiger handhelds? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those those single bit noises pitch shifted to make sure I get a headache before bed are not my favorites. Right. Yeah. So, we Billy and myself have made our own personal top 5 lists. I have not shared the uh results of the poll, which I I blew it out to a top 10 because we, like I said, we had so many responses and thank you everybody in the Facebook world. If you're listening to the show, which you aren't, thank you for uh, responding to this. So I had so many, I went to 10. I'm going to let Billy uh, guess at the 10 while we list them off and then we'll share our own personal lists. And then we'll go out with me telling Billy why his opinions are bad. Like most of these shows degenerate into <laughs> over. Okay, you want me to guess what the top 10 are? I thought that would be fun. Uh, you don't have to do I, 1 through 10. Just We'll just start. What do you think, okay, what do you think that can, the most mentioned video game system was for people's favorites? OG NES. That is not number one. Is it, it, It's close, though. It's top 10, without a doubt. Yes, NES is in the top 10. Number one was the Super Nintendo. Oh, that was going to be my second guess. Well, you can't guess it second. Because there's a different <laughs> second place system. <laughs> and most of the people said that they love Super Nintendo for the library, which, yes. Um, yes. I would say that a lot of people agree it's at least in the top three libraries of any system all time, just on on depth and quality and the way that it's aged. Everybody loves Super Nintendo. Right. Yeah, I, I I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, oh, I can't stand Super Nintendo. I mean, unless they're like a 15-year-old kid. They're like, why are you playing this? Yeah. It's not even 3D. Because it's awesome, that's why. The only passes I give is to people who didn't have one, like myself. I grew up a Sega Genesis guy. So we rented Super Nintendo, but I didn't hate it just because that's I had what, to rent it instead of buying it. You know. That's why I like uh, Genesis now. Is I never had a Genesis as a kid or even access to play one uh, more than just a handful of times. One of my cousins had a Genesis, and I remember playing uh, Altered Beast and a couple other games. Altered Beast, man, I was like, there's nothing like this on Super Nintendo. And that's what all the rest of my family had, so that's what I was used to playing. And now as I've gotten older, I'm like, man, that was, you know, over a thousand games for the Genesis and I've never played them. I mean, the only game I can tell you straight off that uh, I hunted down, I actually hunted it down to load it onto an emulator to play. I had to find the files and everything. I actually got a Genesis emulator just to play this game. And it was Crusader of Senti. I think we touched that on a different Maybe that was on, it wasn't on your discount one, but it was, maybe it was, I don't know. One of our specials, you talked about Sendy before. Yeah, I probably mentioned it before. I always loop back around when it's Genesis. For me, it's General Chaos. 
because I that I loved that game when I was a kid. And then Vector Man and then the Fantasy Star series were the ones that I pounded the most. And man, I loved there was something that just looked different about the Genesis, especially oh, yeah. going to Super Nintendo. Um and it's funny you say Vector Man because on my YouTube, if you scroll all the way back like five years ago, uh the first gameplay video I ever did was Vector Man. Because yeah. somebody somebody was like, have you ever played Vector Man? And I'm like, no. And they're like, try it, try it. And I'm like, okay, and I'll record it and post it up. And that's what I did. That was the first time I ever played it. Interesting little game. Reminded me a lot of um, uh, Earthworm Jim or like that style of platformer. It, it wasn't yeah. exactly the same. It, it had a vibe, though. You yeah, know? those super stylized, like, shooter platformers like yeah modern day contras yeah <laughs> yep all right so none of that was about super nintendo perfect that's that's the style of this show so <laughs> <laughs> what's number two billy what's the number two most popular system on facebook um all right so i have an opinion and i know what it should be but I also have an opinion that people are going to say something that's not necessarily true because they don't want to admit the truth. And I'm going to say the number two absolutely should be Nintendo 64. I, I mean, yeah, it should be Nintendo 64, but the one that they're not going to admit to is PlayStation 2. You are in touch with your community, Billy. Is number two is N64, and number three is PlayStation 2. So, the, <laughs> so the, the, the people are willing to admit that they love both of them in that order, though. So. Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, Killing it. Kill it. I mean, do we, do we really need to hammer into the N64? We got so many classics on there. Uh, it, it was insane. Rare was firing on all cylinders nintendo was firing on all cylinders uh first party third party games were really killing it back then and um i'll say as far as ps2 one of by far one of the best game libraries available yes they had a ton of trash on there but they had a ton of great games too a lot of the Facebook comments on N64, um, well, we have Brad from one website. I'm not going to give everybody's whole names because, you know, I'm not going to. Um, and a lot, like, a, lot, a lot of people said the same thing, that this was their, you know, their first console or the first console that they personally bought, depending on their age group. A lot of people had got it for Christmas. They remember the release. Um, I know that I lean towards N64 is my favorite because it is. So I'm in more Nintendo groups, but I we this poll did extend to PlayStation groups, Xbox groups, uh, European-based groups. So even when you run the whole gamut, everybody appreciates Nintendo 64, PlayStation 2 because of that's that's the generation that now embraces the retro collecting that we're a part of. That's that everybody's a part of now. There are people our age that still love video games, but also love to relive the stuff that they had when they were kids. Absolutely. I mean, look, my favorite system always has been Nintendo 64. It came out when I was like 19, 20 years old, something like that. Um, Mike, we met because you joined my group in Facebook, which is N64 Players and Collectors. A friend and I started that group because we love Nintendo 64, and that was, you know, the main reason we started that group. And um, we're up to like 14,000 members. I mean, that nothing to sneeze at. It's nowhere near what Mike's doing with the Super Group, but you know, we're we're happy with our numbers. We I, I think we've done a great job of keeping a, a small community feel with a medium-sized group. But the whole creation of the group was just because we love Nintendo 64. I love Nintendo 64. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to start a group about all of retro gaming. I ended up doing another group later on. I'm like, I I'm going to 
be strictly Nintendo 64 since that's my favorite. And good decision, man. It was a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you picked a good system. You picked my favorite system. That's foreshadowing. That's another radio trick that we use around here. <laughs> you never know what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Until we tell you ahead of time. <laughs> and then we so, make sure to point out that we just did it. <laughs> yep. Because we're smooth. So for fourth, we had a three-way tie between three systems, got the exact same amount of votes. Billy, if you can name one of them, I would be impressed. All right, I got it. I'll name two of them. Okay. Crack my neck here like I'm going into the ring to fight, son. GameCube Dreamcast. No. <laughs> Wait, which one? No. Neither of them. <laughs> Shut up. What kind of lunatics did you talk to? <laughs> everybody. I talked to everybody. <laughs> Fourth place was a tie between NES, which you just probably forgot about because you thought it was number one, uh, the Genesis, okay, and the Switch was the other one in that. You know, I can kind of see that it 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 seems reasonable to me. Even the Switch seems reasonable to me because ninety percent of the games I play now are probably on the switch because i'm on sitting right here dude it's because it's portable i bring it anywhere with me if i get five minutes to play a game i can play it uh nes is obviously the the that's the daddy of game systems you know we had atari before that we had coleco vision we had in television nobody cares eight bit Nintendo was the jam. 16-bit Sega Genesis. Wait, Genesis was 32, right? No, the Genesis had the 32X. I mean, I guess if you add the 32X, it was 32 Oh, okay, right, right. But original 16-bit. Yep. Okay, so, yeah. Blast all processing, that... though. Blast <laughs> processing don't mean anything. Oh. The show was made with <laughs> blast processing, Billy. This show is made with blast processing because it doesn't exist. <laughs> but the Genesis was, to me, the Genesis was important. And this was echoed once again by Facebook, the audience, because it was the first system that felt like it was like catering to like a more mature audience, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like Super Nintendo had a lot of great RPGs, which they did have some mature like storylines, but not mature content. Right. And then uh, Genesis came and kicked, you know, like, just start with, like, Mortal Kombat. Like, Blood. the better version was, yeah, the better version of the Blood Code was on Genesis. Agreed. Yeah. You know, Splatterhouse. Like, just keep, it like, all the games that were, like, <laughs> were gory, even though they were 16-bit, were on Genesis. So that was, it was, that was the divide. If you had a Genesis, you were the cool guy that was playing the weird games with the blood and the gore. If you had Super right. Nintendo, you probably had friends playing, you know, Mario Kart and whatever you were doing. I don't know what those people were doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you're right. Um, And I think Sega constantly went out of their way to position themselves not as Nintendo. And Nintendo was known as the family-friendly game company. We have games for the whole family. And Sega was like, they got games for the whole family. But if you cool, we got games for you, you know? Sega did, Sega did what Nintendo don't, Billy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I got friends that still say that to me once in a while. My my sons tell me I, I have nostalgia glasses on for Nintendo. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe. But that's because I was around for it, you know? That is the way I feel about the NES, though. You know how... So I like playing on emulators, you know, like modded systems and stuff like that. The mm -hmm. NES is tough sometimes to go. When you when we played, so I played a lot of Super Nintendo and Genesis in my life. Going back that one extra step to NES, there's a lot of games that I remember loving that are just hard to play now, though. Dude, there's a term for that. NES hard. 
It's Nintendo well, not, hard. Not physically hard. I mean, hard on my feelings. <laughs> like, this oh. is not, it doesn't look as good as, as it, you oh. know. No, it's and never then, going to. And then it, on top of that, the other big detriment is like password word based systems and stuff like that uh, like, that's another thing i I cut, I cut off games so quickly if i have to like write a password down the same hold it. on hold like, on oh, Di- not- <laughs> on those lines this was terrible you ready for this one i can't remember if it was um metroid i feel like it was metroid may have been uh metal gear might have been mega man i don't know i don't remember but I could never save my game and I could never use the password. I always had to start at the very beginning. And that's because I was playing my game on a 13 inch black and white TV. And the password code was round colored circles. And I had no idea what colors they were. (laughs) So that was terrible, man. So you weren't one of those kids that just left your when your when your parents weren't watching for the weekend, you just leave it on all weekend long and just shut the TV off and just hope that they didn't see it. <laughs> what? My my parents. You just leave your sit. You leave your didn't. system on. What? So no, you just left. So we had a TV in our bedroom, and oh y'all was leave rich the system. Then. No, it was not a great TV. It was it was one of much like what I you're know, talking you about. It was rich. one that was in the the wooden ca- the wooden cabinet on wheels. One of those oh, TVs. So. You just keep on bragging, don't you? It came out it came out of grandma and grandpa's basement when they remodeled. <laughs> anyway, you could leave the system on and just let it run, and then you didn't have to save. You just come back and pretend like, oh, I forgot to shut my game off, and then you just turn the TV back on, and the game's still going. No, Eight hours had- later. No, we had one TV in the whole house, bro. <laughs> that wasn't happening. Dad come in to watch TV, and that thing was on. It was probably going to end up on the other side of the room. <laughs> so, no. Although, I did do that with uh, my Nintendo 64 when I first got it because I did not have the controller pack, and so I couldn't save some of my games. So uh, at that point, I was living on my own. I, I didn't live with my parents. I, I probably, my daughter was probably born or right around that time. And uh, I would just leave it on. Like, I didn't yeah. care. I've heard that story so many times, being the uh, the beacon of Quest 64 awesomeness that I am, that <laughs> a lot of people didn't get very far in the game because they didn't have a controller pack. And that game was, first of all, pretty brutal for the first 45 minutes especially if you can't get to the first town and save and catch your breath and be like all right now i'm gonna grind a little bit like if you had to leave it on i can Uh understand why you never got past the first boss i completely hear that then that's like playing dragon warrior without like being able to save or rest or man the first the beginning of that game just like drops you in and just bye drives away like that's yep this way yet (laughs) good luck (laughs) see you kid (laughs) <laughs> don't get dead all right moving on number five do you want to do you want to venture some more guesses here or do you, are you so disenfranchised with this list that you don't want to do that anymore oh no no i'm good let's roll okay so give it to me what's number five mm. you've mentioned it already for one of the other spots gamecube it is gamecube Ah, what up? Why up? GameCube. First system that I bought with my own money. Really? Yep. Nice. Without somebody like, or, you know, like I split, I went splitsies on an Xbox with my parents, I think. No, it couldn't have, that Xbox would have been too late. I don't know. Oh, maybe it was a Dreamcast. It was a Dreamcast. My brother and I combined our money with my parents' money to get a Dreamcast. Huh. But GameCube I bought by myself, and my first game was NBA Street. Oh, I was going to ask what your first game was. Yeah, Street, man, A- NBA Street and NFL Street, great games. Uh, NBA Street, oh, awesome. the greatest version of that game was also on GameCube, and that was V3. 
two. Two is better. Three, man. You. I love two. Two, two, two gives me a special feeling. I don't know. That's Three, just the you one could for bring me. in the Mario characters. Two. Two, Billy. Two had yeah. the best. Had the best like passing and combo system. I know they had too much in three. That's uh, that's always a thing for me is that when games keep progressing and then they keep adding, but they don't like take any stuff away or like go back and balance. That's happened to me with like Smash Brothers over the years too. First one was great. Second one was better. Third one was Wii. <laughs> and now now it's too much for me. So. Did you say it was Wii? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that knocks it off the list automatically for me. I'm, I'm not yeah. the biggest. I, I sell Wii's because I, I think they make amazing emulation machines. The hardware is great for it. But as far as Wii games itself, I've only played a couple. I, I don't find it super appealing. My kids love the Wii. My nieces and nephews that are just hitting 19 years old, they love the Wii. Um, maybe I was born too early for it or something. I don't know, but, uh, I thought that about GameCube for a long time. Like, uh, I don't know if I could play that. Uh, I, I didn't buy it when it first came out. Well, I did, but I bought it and gave it to my kids and I played PlayStation too. I, that's what I had for me. And then about eight years ago, I guess, as soon as I got to New York, I'm like, I'm buying me another GameCube. I didn't live in a bad neighborhood anymore where people steal stuff out your house all the time. Um, so I didn't ever want to own anything back home before I moved to New York because uh, that kept happening. We lived in a real bad area. And then I moved to New York and I uh, first I got a Nintendo 64 and then uh a Super Nintendo, and then a GameCube. And um, I remember thinking, man, I don't know how many GameCube games I've actually played. And at that point, I had played like probably 30 minutes of GameCube games up until eight years ago. And now I can say I've played a lot of that library, and I, I love the GameCube. Yeah. It's a special one for me because that was the first. Mario 64 was big. And Goldeneye was big for my family. But the first game that really brought my family together as like a gaming family was Animal Crossing. I will never forget like having everybody in the house having to have their own memory card. And then my parents like (laughs) sneaking into my bedroom at like four in the morning because it was because they wanted to check to see if it was raining so they could catch fish at before six o'clock so they could make bank. (laughs) Have them like, shut up, don't wake him up. Like, <laughs> just catch some fish. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that my favorite Mario game is actually Mario Sunshine. My absolute favorite. I love it. So, also, one of my favorite Zelda games is definitely in my top three is Twilight Princess on GameCube. So, not the Wii version. The Wii version is not good. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm old. <laughs> so what, I mean, it's true. <laughs> so what's next on the list, Billy? Number six. What do you what do you postulate number six is? Um, let me think for a second. We've already covered um, Genesis, Nintendo 64. Um, Super is gone. PlayStation 2, NES, and Switch. So, man, I don't think a lot of people are going to jump up and say, I really like playing Atari 2600 now. I, I'm going to have to go with, uh, man, it it can't be Saturn. I still lean towards Dreamcast, but I would think Dreamcast or Saturn. Those are on the list, but not yet. PlayStation 1 was the sixth spot. I was kind of thinking that, but mm, I'm off. Uh, yes, uh, had a lot of good games. Not enough uh, platformers for me, but because I was really into platformers at that time. Great system. Gave a Spyro. Uh, the big one for me was Monster Rancher. I, I had the Xbox, or I had a N64, 
every game that was on both systems, I always thought looked better on N64 and played better on N64, so I played them on there instead. But Monster Except Entry just killed Resident me. Resident Evil 2. <laughs> Resident Evil 2 is great on the N64. That's a cartridge wonder, Billy. <laughs> it really is. Wonder how they got that cartridge to actually work. Oh, that's right. They put 12% and it does. of the game on it. <laughs> that's got... That game's got lore on it that isn't on the PS1 version. There's there's little snippets and pictures that aren't even in the other one. They give you all sorts of clues to Raccoon City stuff from Cold Veronica. Really? Yeah. Hmm. All right. That's my now. That's my anybody who watches me on Facebook. That's going to be a fun fact for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I I don't mind the PS the PlayStation. I don't. That's probably my least revisited system to go back to because all those any game that was like worth its salt on there is on something that's easier to play now like yeah the loading times were were rough going back now they're real bad (laughs) you know what you know what else i didn't like about that era game games were freaking two three four disc yeah oh man that that was an argument that was a, a playstation kid argument was uh why do you got N64? This game needs to be on four discs. That's how you know it's good. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I have games that came with three discs, and I'm like, that's a terrible game. It's just long. <laughs> yeah. It's long and terrible. That's what you're not understanding. I'm like, look, you show me Vagrant Story. That's one disc. That's a good game. Yeah. But, you know... You come in with something else, like, I, what was it? It's some racing game. I can't remember what it is. It's two or three discs. And I'm like, why is a racing game, like, three discs? Well, Gran Turismo was, the first two were both multi-discs because, like, it was multiplayer on one and regular career mode on the other. I love Gran Turismo. That was one, so that was one of the few things that I didn't have on the N64. There was good racing games, but there wasn't good like Racing simulation Sims? was yeah. yeah yeah yep nope i understand that completely they did have good racing games uh i know people like to shit on it but uh automobile lamborghini i enjoyed somebody asked me about um extreme g today but if if i thought it was any good i'm like it's a decent game for the price you're not going to go wrong you know uh, but no, they didn't really have any racing sims. Uh, as far as PlayStation, they had all the good racing sims. They had all of the good long form RPGs. Um, all of the good RPGs. <laughs> <coughs> no, in all seriousness, like it, it just. To me, they might have been in the same generation, but they were two very separate entities that capitalized on different aspects. Um, yeah. Whereas your PlayStation 1 might have had, um, say, uh, uh, Nintendo 64 had an RPG, and PlayStation 1 specialized in RPGs. They were very different from what each one would do. It was almost like yeah. two... Like, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like a little bit like an idiot right now because what I'm trying to say is even though they were the same generation, they were two very different products, kind of like um, Windows and uh, and Apple. You know, yeah. they they at a glance, they look the same, but they're not. Yeah, you know? they were hard. They were very much Hardee's and McDonald's. You never go in. You don't go to McDonald's for for fish or chicken. You go to McDonald's for the burger and you go to Hardee's for the rest of the sandwiches. Wait, I don't know. Do you have Hardee's by you or do you have Carl Jr.? I always forget like regionally what it, what we got Carl Jr., baby. Okay. It's Hardee's here. So it's, yeah. You know, we did have here. I'm not going to lie. And it broke my heart when it closed down. Roy Rogers. You ever ate out of Roy I've Rogers? Heard of it. We don't have one. You know no. what they got in that place? My wife one day, uh, it's probably it's you know probably like a twenty minute drive. We were out in that area shopping, 
And my wife was like, you ever ate at a Roy Rogers? And I'm like, no. And she's like, well, let's stop and get something to eat. And it's a fast food joint. They got like fried chicken. They got burgers. They got a little bit of everything, you know? And I'm like, okay. And she's like, what are you going to get? I said, I don't know. Probably something that's going to give me a heart attack while I'm eating it. Because that's how I like to eat. Like, this is going to be something that is really not good for me. Um, I want a lot of fat in it. I want it to be delicious. So. I get up to the counter. Dude, they got a hamburger with ham on it. A hamburger <laughs> with grilled yeah. ham on top of that. Yeah. I don't know what they called it. It was like the double bar burger or something like that. Not me. Bill calls it the ham hamburger. And I'm going to eat one. <laughs> and it became my go-to, man. My wife's like, where you want to eat? Well, we going over there. Let's swing by Roy Rogers. I need to get a ham hamburger. The first time I'm eating it, I'm holding my chest. And my wife's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, you can really feel it in your chest area. That's how you know it's working. <laughs> we have those around here, too. They're usually called, like, like backyard burgers or pit burgers because they usually have yeah. not just, like, ham, but, you right. know, like, they do have pork on them. Yeah. Right. But yeah. You gotta yeah, have, have that a... two meat sandwich, man. I, I don't. That's a whole restaurant idea. I tried to pitch that yep. with my friends when I was younger because we have bur- we have, so we're big. I, I'm from Wisconsin. We eat a lot of brats. We also have brat patties, and there's a couple places that do the double decker where it's a burger patty and the brat patty on the other thing. I'm like, we should have a whole restaurant of just two meats. You have to pick two meats to go on your burger. It's right. gotta be a you know chicken and brat or <laughs> fish and beef. But you have to Fish have two. Beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You'll I'll take the serve. One. I'll take the serve <laughs> yep. turf. That's a turkey bake burger and uh, speckled trout. <laughs> well, McDonald's just did that. They did that for their like their. I just got one last year. They had a whole app special where it was a. It was well. It looked like it looked like you were getting a Big Mac and the McFish together but what they did is they just gave them to both in the bag and then they had you're supposed to make it yourself okay so <laughs> like no I'm, make it like a picture this isn't subway give me what up. i want you know how people <laughs> always talk about like a mcdonald's or a starbucks secret menu so yeah back home this is not a joke if you went through the drive through you couldn't ask for it in the mcdonald's but we lived in this little town. If you went through the drive-thru and my kids grew, grew up eating this, it's their favorite sandwich. And they order this stuff now and put it together themselves because New York isn't going to have this. If you go through the drive-thru and you ask for a Mick Gang Bang, it's the double, it's the 99 cent double cheeseburger with the 99 cent spicy chicken patty in between the two burger patties. And so it was $2, and we called it the Mick Gang Bang. And if you went in the place and ordered it, they would say, I don't know what you're talking about. We don't sell that. You can order this and this, and you would have to order both sandwiches. But if you went through the drive-thru and asked for a Mick Gang Bang, they would make it for you. And now, like, my yeah, my sons, they're like, I'm like, hey, I'm running McDonald's. You guys want anything? My son's like, uh... Me a chicken sandwich and a double cheeseburger, and I'm like, all right, I know what's up, bro. <laughs> you're 23 and you're still eating that crap, huh? <laughs> I'm not hating. That's the kind. That's the kind of food foodie I am. So it's <laughs> well, I it's disappointing uh, because a lot of like people don't really realize. I'm sure you do, but people don't really realize that McDonald's and other fast food companies tend to have regional menus. So down on the Gulf Coast and Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, Florida, we have slightly different foods at McDonald's that you guys don't have on your regular menu. Um, when we moved to New York, we had to get used to a certain kind of chicken sandwich that they have here on McDonald's menu, whereas back home, it was a spicy chicken sandwich. You know, it would there were they're two very different chicken patties. And, uh, you know, I went somewhere else. I was out in the Midwest and the burger, the chicken sandwich was different there too. So yeah. it gets, it gets a little regional, you know, they're not going to mess with the, with the double quarter pounder. No, but they playing with that chicken. 
Yes. Yeah, we like mayo here in the Midwest, Billy. You can't get a chicken sandwich without being slathered in mayo. <laughs> That's gross. Like, yeah. let me get a little bit. <laughs> but we be, like it. <laughs> be, be, be light with it, you know? Just, like, breathe some mayo on it. Don't, don't like, slather it on just a wisp of mayo. <laughs> nope. If you open the chicken sandwich around here and it doesn't fly out of the wrapper <laughs> from the lack of friction, then it was made wrong. Just, just <laughs> moisten the bread with the mayo. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because we continue to get off track every single episode, <laughs> I'm going to fly through did. the rest of this list. Uh, number seven was Xbox 360. Uh, I love the Xbox. We'll yeah. get to that later. Uh, Wait, did Dreamcast you say 360? Yeah, 360 was number seven. All right, I'm going to disagree, but keep going. <laughs> Dreamcast was eight. Get out. It should be higher. All right, go ahead. I, I also agree. Uh, the first handheld was at number nine. The Game Boy Advance was the only handheld, unless you count the Switch as a handheld, to make the list. I don't know Anger. if people just don't associate handhelds with home consoles i did get we got a lot of votes for handhelds but not nearly as much as the like tv based consoles right right and then uh there was a three-way tie for 10 uh the wii billy's favorite system the playstation (laughs) 3 and the saturn all got the same amount of votes for 10th place okay so let me throw my opinion in on number 10 yeah number one the wii I think I'm too old for that system. Like I said, I like the system because I think it is absolutely by far Nintendo's best system set up for emulation. Um, And that's why I build off of those because no other Nintendo system and most equipment you can buy to run good emulation uh, can't be compared to the Wii in that sense. Um, So, By that fact alone, I like the Wii uh, enough. Uh, Sega Saturn, if Sega Saturn is your favorite system, you're lying. It's not a good system. Tired of it. I'm going to put the foot down. Sega Saturn's bad, man. You know what? Sega Saturn, it it was what? Uh, Supposedly the equivalent of Nintendo 64 and, uh, and PlayStation 1. And then so, what did they yeah. what did they do on the 3D level? Nothing. It's all side scrollers. Nights in the Dreams is the closest thing you get, and that's 2.5D. I mean, Donkey Kong Country on Super Nintendo looked just as good. It's very similar in concept. Um, I I've had like a two hundred dollar game for Sega Saturn, three dirty dwarves. You know, it's a nice little beat 'em up. But guess what? It would have been just as good on Super Nintendo. It was a side scroll of beat 'em up. Who cares? Like Saturn came out at a super weird time, and I actually the argument that you just gave me was the one that I use <laughs> on the person that was defending the Saturn. And I actually <laughs> like the Saturn. I'm like, listen, man, I love the Saturn. It's, it's not as good as the PlayStation the M64. His argument was is that the Saturn and that the Jaguar. Jaguar and the 3DO all yeah. fit in the that that they should be in a different generation that they shouldn't be considered five or uh four or five or five they, or six. They should I be can agree because they're 32 bit and not 64 bit, but they're also not 16 bit, even though they were out at the same time as the Genesis and the PlayStation and stuff. So like that. I can agree that the Jaguar and Saturn should be 4.5 generation and not fifth generation because neither of those were 64 bit despite what they said yeah Uh, jack saturn was close but they didn't execute it jaguar just lied and rearranged numbers to equal 64 it was complete nonsense the jaguar was a 32 bit system i mean there were there were super nintendo games consistently looked better than Jaguar games. And they were literally the same games too. Yeah. Like, yep. The same games released for both those. And that, and that's where it gets mucky is that that generation is considered the 32 bit and 64 bit generation. Cause the next, the next generation with Xbox PS2 dreamcast 
and GameCube was so markedly better with the with the graphics that there oh, has to be a split in there somewhere. And then the one below that had, was all straight 16 bit Genesis and or, uh, Super Nintendo. So there is some play in between. But yeah, I actually like the Saturn library if you expand it out to to Japanese games because we don't they got the Saturn North American library is smaller than the N64 North American library. It's like 250 games or something like that. But when you right. blow it up and add Japan, it's like 1900 games or something like that. It's just, there's yeah. so, and granted there are a lot of Pachinko games and chumps and RPGs that you're never going to translate and yada, 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 but there's a lot of good stuff in there too. We missed a lot of Bomberman games. And so I, I hear the defense and I appreciate it, <laughs> but I also 100% agree with you that anybody who says that the Saturn was their favorite system is, is like got some weird fedora and only drinks IPAs. <laughs> Like, 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 don't even pretend like that's what, like, you didn't have a single friend. I worked in retail video games. You didn't have a single friend growing up that had a Saturn. You had four friends that had N64s and three <laughs> friends with PlayStation, and that, yep. that's what you played. You didn't go home to your Saturn. You went home to one of those two things. Yep. Dude, so I bought a Saturn years ago, and I had a whole shelf of games for it and i tried every game i had at least once and then i was looking at my game room one day and uh i realized i have not touched a saturn in over a year not a single game nor have i even considered one time when i was thinking what do i want to play have i for the briefest second even considered well Maybe I should hook up the Saturn. I kind of want to check that game out again. It was nothing. And that's when I said, uh, okay, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take my Coleco Vision with all the games for that. And I'm going to sell off all of that stuff. Uh, I'll sell it to somebody that wants it, you know, because I'm not using it. It's just collecting dust. And I mean, I yep. don't. And this even collecting Saturn, is rough. Too. I just don't think it was that great. Yeah, but. Like you said, it's collecting dust, and that's so. That's one of the main detriments of that system is not all, one. It's expensive to collect because nobody bought it, and then two, that's Sega CD and Sega Saturn are the only games that I'm afraid to buy without having it in my hands because those discs oh, rot yeah. so fast and so oh, frequently. Don't, they, don't say they those two words. Terrify me. Don't. Oh, dude, <laughs> you you said the magic words to start a panic in any facebook gaming group disc rot <laughs> oh yeah terrifying oh, those oh. oh sega was so bad at that <laughs> uh the saturn yes the saturn definitely suffers from disc rot gamecube has a couple games that uh like uh twin snakes is one yep. of those games that Metal suffers Gear's from really it. bad at that right uh has a couple games that uh, are affected by it but i learned a couple years ago that i don't use the words disc rot in polite company on facebook game group people are like what are like, oh no disc rot disc rot all my games have disc rot and i'm like no 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 that's not what it is you're like <laughs> And it starts a big panic in the group every time someone says disc rot, you know, and it's really not that prevalent. It's not that serious. Yeah. Uh, probably the console. Well, that it's not that serious because Saturn. nobody collects Saturn and, and Sega CD. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, if, if you know a system that's more prone to it than Saturn, let me know because I don't. <laughs> you don't because they're all rotted away. So. Yeah. I got mm, I got a right. bunch of I got a bunch of Saturn discs that look like uh those verbatim CDs and with a CD case full of paint chips at this point. <laughs> okay. All right, Billy, winding down the night. Yep. Give me your give me your top five so we can get to that. Oh, my top five is super simple, and I'm just gonna blow through them. At five, I yeah. got the Sega Genesis. At four, I got the PlayStation Two. At three, I got the Sega Dreamcast. Two is the GameCube. Number one is Nintendo 64. 
And I do have an honorable mention, which Mike thinks is weak because it's not being firm in my decision, but I stand by it. Honorable mention and mark my words in the future. People are going to love this system. It just doesn't get enough respect. And that's the Wii U. The Wii U kickstarted the Switch. The Switch's first two years of games, I would say at least 60% of them, was originally Wii U games. The gamepad on the Wii U is better for the gyroscope aspects than the Switch will ever be. Any game that's on both of them, say you're playing Breath of the Wild and you're in one of the shrines with the gyroscope, way better with the gamepad than it is with the switch um i think it's it it was it undersold it was poorly marketed i think as time goes on more and more people are gonna fall back in love with the wii u people are gonna want to check that out so that's my honorable mention and i just wanted to go into it a little bit because we talked about all these other systems already i agree with you i love the wii u it's not on my list either but it's it's something that I still own my original Wii U that I bought. And I will probably never get rid of it. Just I love that system. Yeah. Just not as much as my five, which from the bottom, uh, Sega Genesis is my five. Dreamcast is my four. Nintendo DS is my three. Xbox 360 is my two. <laughs> and N64 is my number one. All right. What was your number two again? 360. Best library that Microsoft ever put out. Any yeah. Microsoft system. The X- Xbox 360 has got a ridiculous, ridiculous library. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculously filled with AAA games that you could play on any other system and seven games that were exclusive to 360. OG <clears throat> Xbox was a good library system. Uh, three. 360 eh, it's okay at best it's fucking oh i'm not supposed to say that word it's mid dude it's mid <laughs> the xbox but, 360 lit up the online scene there was not good consistent online until xbox live jumped from xbox live to the 360 system and drug it over the playstation network was terra bad for playstation no, I, 2 I, I, I don't I care how many people like that. defend it so all those games that you're like, oh, you could have played that on another system. Dude, if you were playing Call of Duty when Modern Warfare or Call of Duty 4 or whatever you want to call it dropped, and you were playing it on PlayStation instead of Xbox, you were suffering. Because their network dropped all the time. Everybody's like, why did you pay for Xbox? Why? Because Xbox Live is never down. That's why I, that's why I paid for it. <laughs> no, I get that. And I definitely agree that um, the online gaming scene would not be anywhere near what it is without the 360. Um, probably the most vital concept was their online functionality. Um, I think that might have ended up being a big problem with that generation altogether is because consoles started going all in at that point on online gaming. Yeah. Um, starting to drop off with too many... Uh, single player story driven games that you know we continue to see that to this day but i don't i don't think we could have had the uh the internet presence gaming has now without the 360 i give it credit for that i just if i if if i'm gonna play a console from that generation nine times out of ten it's gonna be the playstation 3 see i liked so we were talking about racing sims i liked forza two and three better than I liked Gran Turismo three and four. Really? Just because, yep. And once again, it goes back to online. Playing Forza with my friends was incredible. And then the the customization that you could do on your vehicles and then sending them off to your friends. And like, plus, I just love that game. It was great. And Gears of War, that was probably the most fun cover-based like shooter that I played. And once again, awesome online. So all three of those were fun to play campaign or you know, multiplayer together. I man, there was just a lot of games that I just really preferred. No, I get I get what you're saying about Forza. Uh my son Lucas, he is a major Forza player. So he's on the I don't 
I don't know which Xbox is it. The one that's in between the one and the Series X, the Series S or whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I'm, okay, yeah. so he has yeah. that now. Um, I was on PS3 and my kids were playing at the time. They were playing 360. So Lucas is a Forza player. He has the driving rig with the steering wheel and the speed shifter and the pedals. And I remember him asking me, he's like, uh, Dad, can you buy this shifter for me? And I'm like, yeah, buddy, no problem. How much is it? He's like, oh, it's like $170. And I'm like, for the steering wheel and everything? He's like, no, just the shifter. <laughs> I'm like, for Forza? We doing this for Forza? But he's always showing me stuff on there. I find it interesting, but uh, it's just not a gameplay style that I'm into, you know? I understand. I understand. I mean, I respect it for what it is. It's cool. It's just not my kind of cool. Xbox 360 is probably the system, even though I don't, I've I'm never, maybe I will. I guess if it gets real cheap, I'd consider it. But I have more Xbox 360 games than I have games for any other system. I bet because 360 games, man, you could, they're probably one of the cheapest libraries out there without a doubt. So if you're looking for a good uh, system to play that has what, like a thousand games in the library. Yeah, it's a lot. And I would say I, I'd probably be pretty accurate if I said uh, 75% of the library is 15 bucks or below, you know? Yeah. So if you want a good a good system with a ton of games, you know, for cheap, 360 is the way to go. I agree. And that's why I, I, I don't mind still collecting. When I find cheap 360 games, I still buy them because there's that's one of the systems I still go back and touch, too. Like, I don't mind firing my 360 up, even going back and looking at old Minecraft servers or playing whatever. Like, it's fun to go back and just look. Uh-huh. We're just built different, Billy, you and I. We built different. We do things different. I was going to try to rap, but then I decided it would probably be a bad idea. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a musician. I sing all the time, but it ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> you can rap, but instead we can start to rap the show up because Smooth. once again we always run all all the way to the end of this of this of our time limit arguing about things that you don't like <laughs> yeah i don't like a lot of things mike i'm a professional not liker <laughs> how much does how much does hating hating pay billy to be a hater, um, is that an hourly job? Or do you get like a stipend for everything that you um, hate? It's How many things do I have to hate to be a hater? <laughs> uh, it's kind of a lifestyle, man. You can't just like step in, oh, I'm going to hate some stuff and get paid. No, you got to put your time in. You got to hate a lot of different stuff and find out what hating can do for you. <laughs> well, so hating nice. got me into this this show so I could sit and fuel your hate. So. <laughs> Uh, yes let the hate flow through you <laughs> all right well i hate to go long and i hate to to blow up out the box radio and take all their time when they have other wonderful programming and and music to share with our listeners so i'm gonna let billy close this down for tonight and i'm gonna try to keep my radio job till next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh definitely Check us out here weekly on Out of the Box Radio with me and Mike Got It Made Think, where we're just going to be chilling, talking about video game related things and whatnot. Not actually, not the app, whatnot, you know, just <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're not here. Make sure to cruise the internet for all of your Billy-related merchandise. Like I said, we're Billy's expanding out now. Uh, renovate home renovation and uh, <laughs> aquarium supplies and Funko Pops. Uh, if you're looking for something, Billy's got it. No Funkos. <laughs> I, I have to draw the line somewhere, Mike. If it's in my house and it's not bolted down, I will sell it to you. But I'm telling you now, there will be no Funkos in my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you ready to All wrap right. this up, Mike? 
I'm done. All right, Thank everybody. You. We'll see you next week. Y'all have a wonderful week. So long. Thanks for all the fish.